Out of the nearly 8 billion people on planet Earth, less than 700 have ever left to explore the universe. In this edition, I speak with one of those lucky few, Nicole Stott. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. Nicole Stott spent 104 days in space as both a crew member of the International Space Station and on board the now retired space shuttle. We're doing really well. They've been following instructions exceptionally well today. They like bossed them around. Her journey into orbit began back in 2000 when she was accepted into NASA's astronaut program. But it took nine years of training before her first launch on a trip that took her to her home for three months, the ISS. During that time, she conducted research and performed vital work to maintain the station's functions, and she undertook a near seven-hour spacewalk. And Nicole Stott moves out of the Quest airlock to begin her first spacewalk. She also found time to complete a watercolour painting inspired by what she saw. Back on Earth, her love of art has taken her in a new direction. She's the founding director of the Space for Art Foundation, a non-profit that looks to help children around the world, and she's now added author to her long list of accomplishments. Your book is called Back to Earth, What Life in Space Taught Me About Our Home Planet and Our Mission to Protect It. So I'm keen to know, what has life in space taught you about life back at home? I think it really, um, in the simplest way, brings it home to me. It's like we, it's not meant to be a memoir, although there are anecdotal stories in there, of course, and certainly about my spaceflight experience, but more really about how we've just so peacefully, successfully established this mechanical life support system in space, right? With this international community of 15 different countries coming together for over 20 years now in this place in space with this mission ultimately all about improving life on Earth with the work we're doing there. And the ways we do that, that's what I want to come through in the book, is the ways that we do that as this community to um, be this just really wonderful example for how we should be living like crewmates down here on Spaceship Earth. Let's talk a little bit more about your time in space because you have had an incredible career as an astronaut two space flights. The first one lasted 91 days, as I understand it. You also performed a spacewalk that lasted six and a half hours. So what's your most favorite memory from that experience? And can you actually pinpoint it down? No, I mean, all of it, really. I mean, you, each of those things you mentioned, it's like, oh yeah, that was, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, the whole thing kind of wraps up, even both flights all together kind of wrap up into this memory, this really wonderful memory. And you know, there's certainly the, the unique things about that environment, you know, getting to float, you know, pushing gently on your chair and moving in three dimensions and just this liberating feeling of flying from one end of the space station to the other. And, uh, you know, the work that we're doing there as this international community, which, um, I mean, I think people would be in awe of the fact that there's hundreds of experiments going on every day in pretty much air, every area of science you can imagine. Again, all of it with this overarching goal of improving life on Earth. And then, you know, then find yourself with your crew in front of the window looking out, you know, back towards Earth. And that is just this reality check of, oh my gosh, we live on a planet. You know, that kind of thing that we learn in kindergarten and somehow don't keep active in our brains every day. And holy moly, we're all Earthlings. And wow, the only border that matters, that thin blue line of atmosphere. And that, I think, then drives you to this idea of, wow, I really do need to behave like a crewmate when I'm down on that place too, not just on this mechanical life support system. Extraordinary. And it's a very simple question, but a very human question as well. Did you ever get scared or nervous <laughs> while you were up there? I don't think, I, scared or afraid, those, I don't remember those feelings. But I mean, I remember from, you know, sitting on the launch pad all the way through, you know, landing, just this awareness, this anxiousness of, oh my gosh, what's it gonna feel like? I've trained so long for this. Certainly a respect um, for, you know, strapping onto a rocket that's then gonna have seven million pounds of exploding, you know, rocket thrust underneath you. You appreciate the significance of that. But if I think about like fear in any way, it wasn't about me. 
It was about my seven-year-old son and my husband watching me do this, my mom and my sisters watching me doing it, and knowing just how much more difficult it is to be a person watching somebody you love launch into space than it is to be the person strapping into the rocket.